All right, we are ready for another podcast conversation. This is Dr. Tony G. Alvarado, the host of Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. We are closing out the month of February with this conversation. We've had some very intriguing conversations all month long, uh, starting with Dr. Shawnee uh, Turan, helping us understand uh, pandemic PTSD. Then we had Dr. Talia Clark on talking to us about heart health with February being Heart Health Month, Heart Health Awareness. Uh, and then Felicia Redding coming in and sharing with us about her 21 Days of Transformation program, her wellness program, and the significance of going on journeys, uh, wellness journeys like 21 Day uh, Transformational Journeys. And then today we are going to close out this month with a conversation with another one of our um, what I call regulars to our podcast, regulars to our uh, health and wellness community. Dr. Anastasia Alvarado was back with us this week, and we're going to be talking today about the power of rest right after this. All right, Dr. Anastasia Alvarado is in the studio today, and I am so glad to have her here with us. So, Dr. Alvarado, my sister in love, as I call her, and my soror, um, thank you for being here with us again. She always, she, she has graced us so many times on this podcast uh, with her with insight, her wisdom, her knowledge. Uh, her sisterhood, and I so appreciate her. Many of you know her as um, a medical doctor in the healthcare. She's a healthcare provider, primarily uh, working with um, with Viewpoint Mental Health here in Georgia. She is um, sick of over 16 years of experience in the mental health field. Her specialties specialties include adolescent medicine, child and adolescent psychiatry. She also works with adults uh, as well as needed. But uh, I am so grateful to have her here. Um, oftentimes, we I kid and I joke about uh, her. Both of us, uh, both of us are Dr. Alvarado. And uh, I'm Dr. Antoinette Alvarado. She's Dr. Anastasia Alvarado. Sometimes people get us mixed up and I tell people I have a doctor of ministry. She has a, a, a doctor of med medicine. She's a medical doctor. She writes prescriptions and I write sermons. All right. right I'm not getting up to preach. Not. <laughs> well, now I'm going to tell y'all, she just came off of our uh, self-care retreat. <laughs> and she's a regular to the self-care retreat, the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Retreat that I, I'm the host of. And ladies, we just got back from Aruba. And I want you to know that I almost gave her a preaching license in Aruba. <laughs> she presented on this topic that we're going to talk about today. I told her we got to come back and unpack this conversation a little more. We just didn't have enough time for what God did in that workshop the morning that she taught on the power of rest. She talked to us about rest. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to unpack it a little more, talk about it a little more. The lady, she left us wanting more, but um, yeah, she fooled around and got anointed. Uh, apparently so. That, that's what they tell me. I, I thought I was just teaching, but apparently that, that spirit was there, but it is a, um, you know, certainly mental health is, is not just a passion. It is ministry for me. So um uh, apparently that is what I do uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. And apparently that ministry just sprinkled itself during the retreat. So, yeah. um, but, yeah, but girl, yes, you rest. Got anointed. I told Bishop, I said, I'm going to have to get Stacy a license to preach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really, really good. And I, I just wanted to end our month. I had Talea on earlier this month as well. And I have to get uh, Melody on 
uh, next month and or sometime real soon to talk to us about uh, what she shared in her journey. Absolutely. Um, um, it was just a powerful time, this retreat. It, Aruba it was, was. Just wonderful. It was absolutely It was wonderful. a much needed break for sure. And this this particular topic had been sitting on me all year. Um, as I told you and the ladies there at the retreat, and I will say again today, usually by the time I am putting together what I'm going to talk about, it's something I've been wrestling with all year. Uh, God had been working with me on it all year. And so I'm like, okay, I can't be the only one. Um, I know I'm not the only one because I have way too many people come into my virtual office um, and talk about um, just being fatigued, being tired, um, just feeling overwhelmed or and the like. And, you know, we, we don't talk enough about, well, that as far as self-care and rest and what that actually looks like, because people just automatically assume I'm talking about sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just one component of rest, which is what we unpacked, you know, while we were there at the retreat and kind of delve much deeper than sleep. Although sleep is so crucial to, to that yeah, whole rest piece. It is. It is so crucial. So one of the things um, you opened up at the retreat, you said, why are we talking about rest? And you said, number one, because we are in a pandemic and we are exhausted. Earlier this month, I had Dr. Shawnee Turan on and we talked about uh, um, pandemic PTSD. Mm -hmm. And so I it's just so much that we've been dealing with. We're in it now for two years, two, four years, right? Years, right? And yeah. so you talked about us being wired um, as women. We're wired to keep things running and we are exhausted. And so you also talked to us particularly, which is why we're doing this podcast, Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color. You talked to us about as Black women, this is Black History Month as well. And so historically, we have been the caretakers. We have been the partner, the spouse, the a daughter, the attentive daughter, sibling, sister, all these things. And all of it requires work. Absolutely. I mean, and we don't really pay attention to the fact that we, you know, we even talked about it from a historical context of the fact that um, we as African-Americans were brought over to this country to work, to labor. And so that our, the value that was placed on us and sometimes the internalized value that we place on ourselves is I have to work, I have to, I have to do these things um, because that's how, how we were seen. We were uh, valued for um, the work that we put out, whether in the field or in the house, and we were valued as to what we produced uh, with our physical bodies, producing more bodies to work and to mm -hmm. labor. Mm -hmm. So you internalize that kind of stigma and it becomes ingrained generationally that we should just constantly be working and culturally with westernized culture it's hard for us to not continue to be in that same mindset or mind frame whereas in maybe other cultures um there's as much emphasis put on rest as there is put on work, but not not in the United States, not in this right. westernized country. Oh, right, right. We, um, I did a um, a study a few years ago, and I actually talk about it in my book on um, harmonize your harmonize your life, a journey to a self care. In there, I put some stats. I I did some stats from the U.S. Labor Department, and I, and it, it stemmed out of a pre sermon series that I did on Sabbath. And I went and looked at some of the work um, stats, work labor stats for the U.S. and found out that in the United States, we work 750 more hours a year. And it's probably more now. This is probably yeah. older than 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 our than any other industrialized nation in the world. Oh, I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. And unfortunately, this pandemic culture, um, even though working from home can be beneficial to an extent, um, I think it has um, created yeah. even more of a dynamic of work and, um, and that's work is at home. Out. Yeah, there's there's no there's limited boundaries unless you incorporate those to separate work from home, work from rest. Um, 
And so it just bleeds into everything and people spend spend more time actually working, I think now, than they do when they were going into the office yeah. and having work, the a lot of people say I yeah. work harder now because there is there is a thin line, you know, whereas when we were going to the office, we had to get in our car. We had to drive across town and then you would look up at a certain time. You knew even if you were still working, you might have been like, OK, I need to get home. I got to get through the traffic. I need right. to. So you would cut it off. Sometimes people would bring work home with them. But for the most part, you were cutting it off and you were going home. Now, work is right here with you. Right. You carry it with you all the time. And it's unfortunate um, because. Um, we have a hard time setting those boundaries with ourselves, but then also our workplace um, doesn't necessarily make it that that easy for us either. In that, you know, certainly mental health is a topic of conversation more and more so. Absolutely, with everything that's going on, mm -hmm. particularly with some recent, you know, suicides and that that becoming yeah. something that is more prominent, and people are talking about it and speaking up. However there's still that stigma that's attached to it. Like they'll tell you, oh, it's okay to not be okay, but make sure you you still come to work or make sure it doesn't affect your productivity or make sure I'm not inconvenienced by your not being okay. And <laughs> so- It's okay to be, it's it's not be okay when you on, when you on vacation on the weekend, but during right. the, I need you still here. Right. I need you present. I need you to give yeah. me what I need. <laughs> Why? Right. But but yeah. it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. And so um so we're like I, when we yeah. first started with the pandemic, for example, when we first started with the pandemic, if you had COVID, you you were supposed to quarantine 10 days, 12 days, 15 days, 14 days, right? Now five days, you need to be back at work. Yes. And why why is that? Did, did it really have anything to do with the science that changed that much? Unlikely. Science didn't change that much. It's a, and that's it's that stigma right. of rest. That right. stigma, that that work, that mentality that we got to always be on. We got to get our grind on, you know. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We got to get our grind on. I got to hustle. And, you know, I was talking to you guys at the re retreat and saying, hey, grinding is for a machine. That's what they do. They, they're machines. We are not. We are not supposed to be a cog in the wheel. We're not supposed to be a machine. And that's why, you know, we, I was emphasizing that there is power in rest because um, we treat rest like it's a reward. Like this is something that I should, I'm rewarded for, Girl. for doing all this work. Rest is a right. You have Girl, the right you to told rest. Us that, that we could have shut down the meeting with that. <laughs> you was like, tell us again, you told us at the retreat, you said, Rest should not be viewed as a reward. It is not a reward. It is your right to rest. Your body, physiologically, your body is not set up to work all of the time. Rest is a right. It's not a reward. You shouldn't have to earn your rest. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. So talk to us about, so Dr. St Anastasia, when, Stacy, when we, think of rest as a reward what how does that impact our ability to rest so it it as far as mentally so then you you create a dynamic for yourself like okay so as soon as for example it didn't even have to be on the job it could be something okay. at home like mm -hmm. okay i have a to-do list to get done and so as soon as I have cleaned up the kitchen and cleaned up the bathroom, made up my bed, then I can give myself that opportunity to uh, sit down for 20 minutes and rest, right? So it's we create that in our minds even, even I without working. I like, just okay, I got to keep doing these things because they're on my to-do list. There's these action items or things okay. or tasks that I need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then it sets up this skewed or distorted dynamic that um, if I don't do these things, then I am, I'm not deserving of rest. Right. Yeah, so if you, if you create that in your mind, that rest is a reward, then, then if I don't, if I haven't finished everything I'm supposed to, if I haven't done it to the, to level of, I was, then I can't sit down. Mm -hmm. I can't rest. I, can't I haven't, rest. I haven't earned it mm -hmm. because 
I'm, I'm not deserving. Because I haven't done all these things. I haven't done everything I was supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. And again, that's that value piece that we put on it. Wow. Right? So we've, we've, we've just turned everything upside down and, and thinking that that's what it should be. And that's not the dynamic that it should be. Like, and you know, I, you know, I should know, rest. That it, it's interesting because one of the things I tell women uh, when I'm teaching on self-care, men, women and men, when I'm teaching on self-care, I always, one of the uh, things that I say or quotes that I repeat is that self-care is not um, a luxury. It's a priority, right? Um, and the danger of looking at self-care as a luxury, similar to what you're saying, looking at rest as a reward, is that if I look at it as a luxury, then I can talk myself out of whatever it is that I need to be doing for self-care. If I look at it as if I don't think I've earned this luxury, if I've done, I've not worked enough hours for this luxury, if I've not, if I don't have enough money for this luxury or whatever, then I can talk myself out of it. I was talking to um, Arielle, my daughter earlier today, I was talking to her about getting herself um, going. She was having some, she's in a colder climate. Okay. And so in our family, arthritis runs in our family. And she was noticing that she was a little more achy and things. And I was telling her to go um, to find a spa near Ohio State University where she can go and do get a massage, where she can get some reflexology for her feet. She's going to be a, she's a conductor. So she's on her feet and all that. She's walking across this big campus. It's not as Ohio State is not Spelman. <laughs> no, it is not. Right. <laughs> um, the climate in Ohio is different from the climate in Georgia. So I was talking to her about doing, so adding some of those things to her regimen of self-care. And she said, oh, so next month I'm going to splurge a little bit and give me a massage. I said, no, 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 no. You're not going to splurge. You're going to make an appointment to get a massage and you're going to add that into your self-care routine. And when you see that, if you if you look at it as splurging, when you don't feel like you have enough money to splurge, quote unquote, you won't do it. But when you see it as this is what I need for my health, for my wellness, for what I need to, to be my best, to do my best work, to continue through this program and make it through this program, then you'll do what you need to do to make it happen. Exactly. And so it's 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 like you said, it's not a luxury. Um, it should be a part of, of the day-to-day -day, um, schedule. I mean, there are certain countries like Spain, for instance, they might build in a siesta. That's yeah. just part of the day. Yeah. Um, it's not, not a, a luxury. It's not a reward. That like is France. Part of the, that is part of the day. Yeah. When they, <laughs> when the, when the women have babies in France, they get a whole, they get like months off with several leave. countries have much better maternity leave. Oh my God. <laughs> maternity leave. I mean, here yes. you push out a baby and 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 two days they putting you out the hospital and you home and you expected to be back work at six weeks. Right. And then we wonder why we have so much postpartum depression in this country. Right. Or you know, issues with maternal fetal um complications, oh you know, yeah. certainly in, in the African American community for sure. So it is maternal a, mortality. It is the constant demand that we put on ourselves physically, mentally. And then we wonder why people are experiencing burnout, why they're experiencing fatigue, why they're it, like, I, I'm just so overwhelmed. I don't know what I'm supposed to do because they didn't build in this rest into their schedule, into their routine as a part of something that th they have the right to do it became something that they pushed off because they made it into a reward for something that they felt like they had to do in order to earn <laughs> what, what even just biblically is something that mm -hmm. God established. God established rest. He established this. So yeah. why are we ignoring something that he established? Right. Like we know better. Everything than has a rhythm. Of <laughs> like he, work. like we know better. But okay, right, right. <laughs> right. And you know, you said something at the retreat. You talked about this idea of radical self care. You were like, why? Do, why would self care have to be considered radical? Yeah. You know, and I, I've even used the term radical self care. I even actually have a whole podcast 
on it. Radical self-care. And I, I used, um, I asked my friend, uh, Pastor Shalita Fabi to come on mm -hmm. and talked about her journey and her uh, resistance to some of the work that's put on us as women in ministry. And, um, and, but you know, why we shouldn't have to use terms like radical and reward when it comes to self care. It, it shouldn't it's be our culture. It shouldn't be, a, it shouldn't be a revolution. Like, Oh my gosh, this is a revolution. It shouldn't have to be like, but it is what we do. Um, and you know, it's, it, and, and that's, I, I, you know, I mentioned, you know, individuals who in particular, who were prominent in the media, who talked about needing a break, needing rest. Um, and we applauded them. You know, we applauded Simone Biles. We, you know, applauded Naomi Osaka. But did we actually incorporate the, the message that they were actually really trying to, to speak loudly and use their platform to say, hey, I need a break. And I'm, I can do that in the middle of the Olympics if that's what I need to do for me, wow. Wow. for me. You know, I, I need to take a break. So I'm going to do that in the middle of a tennis championship. I, I it, it doesn't matter what the platform is. Um, I need to do that for me because I'm deserving of that. Yeah. There's no value that anyone else needs to put on it. I know what I need. Yeah. I need to listen to my my body. I need to listen to my brain. I need to listen to my spirit, which is trying to tell me these things. Um, because it does my body, it shows listen up. to my brain, listen to my spirit. It's right. talking to you, even if you're not listening. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it is talking to you, even if you're not listening. You you quoted a poem. Mm -hmm. Um, um, you quoted a poem uh by Leslie and Andre. I believe well, that's how it's pronounced. Yes. Uh huh. And it was a dedication to Naomi Osaki and Simone Biles. Um, will you read, share that with us on here? It was so powerful. Okay. Um, let me pull it up and I can get that for you. Okay. Um, all right. So for Naomi Osaka and Simone Biles, uh, they didn't quit, they didn't give up. They didn't cower. They did what we have been taught is the one thing magical black women cannot do. Put ourselves first. Our health, our bodies, our minds, our talent, our desires, our strength, our beauty, our genius, our abilities to fly, to soar, to win are supposed to be laid at the feet of whiteness, of this nation, of this world, offered up like a sacrifice to be seen as entertainment, disposable, but never whole, worthy of protection, worthy of peace. We are never supposed to get off the stage, leave the competition, demand solace without permission. Mm -hmm. Permission to be human, permission to rest, permission that is always denied. They did what black women are told we cannot do. They took their power away and walked away. They determined what was best for them, for their souls, for their hearts, for their lives. We are watching, learning, following the trails blazed. Rest should not be a revolution, but it is, and they are. And that is worth more than any medal or title on earth. All yeah. right. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing I'm, that I'm on the podcast. Amazing. When you shared yeah. that with us at the retreat, oh my God, the tears, the, <laughs> I mean, it was just so powerful. Your whole presentation was so, so, so powerful. So let's, let's move into some um, more practical things and how we can, uh, restore our bodies through rest. Okay, absolutely. So, you know, I think the first thing, and I kind of broke it down um, in thinking about things as far as physically and then um, mentally, as far as mind and then spirit. So mind, body, spirit, all of these things, of course, being very much interconnected and and um, wanted to break it down that rest is so much more, again, than sleep. So we, mm -hmm. we 
discuss like physical rest and that their sleep is a component of physical rest, but it's one component because it's a passive activity. Um, and then there's active physical rest. So things that you just mentioned, like massage therapy, because it's restorative, um, where you're helping improve mobility and flexibility and circulation, um, things that are, you're still resting while you're doing, but you're, mm -hmm. there's still a physical, com uh, active physical component to that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so, you know, those are things that people can certainly engage in. And I hope that they do. Um, I think I stepped on a few toes when I started talking about sleep, though, because uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't for people sleep and naps. So I you even, told us that a nap. How long you said a nap? You said we could not. A nap should not be two to three hours. And I was no, like, hey. no. I mean, even on social media, while we were still in Aruba, people were coming for me like, Doc, you're not going to take my naps. I was like, oh, my gosh, what did y'all tell the people? Um, <laughs> but I'm only telling the truth. Um, science, look, the science is what the science is. So okay. a, a nap is, I tell people no more than an hour. Really, it should be about 30 30, 45 minutes at most. Um, and that's because you don't want your body to get into sleep where you start going into different stages of sleep. And um, then it becomes difficult for your body to then go to sleep at night okay. where it's, it's broken. So okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so when you sleep more than a certain amount of time, then your body gets into, um, deep sleep and what we call REM sleep, which is resting eye movement sleep. And you start going back and forth between those two cycles. And so you wonder why you wake up and you're a little disoriented or maybe a little foggy after a really, really, really long nap. And then you like, oh, it's now 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And you had that three hour nap during the day. And then you have a hard time going to sleep at night okay. because your body, your brain, has said, well, I've already had some of this already. So you, you've, you've basically caused a disruption in what we call your cir circadian rhythm and in, in, in that okay. cycle of sleep that should be happening. And I so, can honestly say that I, I, I have experienced that, particularly with my Sunday afternoon naps. Right. So. And what I did tell you guys was that I was talking about napping being something or napping for two, I'm going to put those in quotation marks, for two to three hours and that being a habit. That people okay. Do. Okay. Okay. So if that's something that you do on a Sunday afternoon after church, and that's not something that you do every single day, like you come home from work or you come from home, home mm -hmm. from school and you go to sleep because that's what you do. Yeah. You like um, you were saying sleep. some of your clients, some of your people. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I have uh, lots of them and they go to sleep for about three hours and then they wake up and have dinner and then do homework. And then they're like, I can't go to bed. I'm up till one or two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you are. Your body has already had a component of sleep. Right. And there's only so much sleep that the body needs as well. So okay. the average adult should be having somewhere between seven to nine hours of consecutive okay. sleep. Okay. Um, so if you took three hours away from that earlier in the day, or you took four hours away from that earlier in the day, it's going to be hard for your body to, to get a, an additional seven to nine hours of sleep at nighttime. Okay. It's, it's not going to do it's that. Not do it. right. It's just not going to do that. Um, and so um, you, you do want to give your body that appropriate rest, that seven to nine hours. That is from the National Sleep Foundation, mm -hmm. where that came from, as well as um, I can't remember. There's another. Um, it's either the National Institute of Health or someone else who've done studies on sleep okay. and okay. how much sleep adults need. Now, this is not children or adolescents. Those numbers differ for them than it okay. does for an adult. Okay. This is talking about individuals 18 to 60. And then actually after 60, then they start uh, dividing up how much sleep is actually needed. So there's a little bit of difference over okay. 60, 65 as well. Okay. Um, well, I'm almost 60, so I may be able to get some more sleep soon. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, so you, you have to look at sometimes too much sleep is too much. So right. over nine hours is too much. And then yeah. again, yeah. It, it can cause some impact. And what people don't recognize is when they're not getting enough sleep, it has definite physical and health ram ramifications, yeah. not just I'm tired and I'm fatigued. And you really can't even lose weight. A lot of times you cannot, you cannot, it, but they're um, not sleeping and it cannot. 
Mm-hmm. It puts you at risk for cardiovascular disease, which Dr. Talea talked about, and this is heart month. So it puts you at risk for cardiovascular disease. It puts you at risk for depression. Um, when you don't get enough sleep, it also impacts your immune system. Um, mm-hmm. it, it impacts um, concentration and cognitive skills. Okay. So we are causing ourselves detriment physically and mentally if we don't get sufficient sleep. Yeah. And African Americans, as I shared with you all, are have uh, more likely to get less sleep. We are more likely to be what we call short or very short sleepers. So anything less than uh so short sleep is five to six hours. And why is that? Same same very short sleep is less than five. So you know they don't they I I to me I believe it has a lot to do with um with again historical um, mm-hmm. context to that. Um, and the fact that we have to look at where we live in the environment mm-hmm. that we live in. Many African-Americans live in um, in urban communities, mm-hmm. um, some communities where there might be more violence sometimes in certain mm-hmm. communities. So it's hard mm-hmm. to get restful sleep uh-huh. when you are worried about what's going on outside mm-hmm. or, or what's happening there. Yeah. Um, you also have to look at the fact that African Americans a lot of times are working um, more skilled labor positions where they might work night shifts or they might work longer hours, twelve-hour shifts or ten-hour shifts, and so then I still have to if I'm a, if I'm a woman, I still have to get home. I still have to take care of the kids. I got to help them with their homework, mm-hmm. and I still have to prepare dinner. Mm-hmm. And I don't have that time in my and that's life. that's true of even a lot of our immigrant communities yes absolutely so working late hours in restaurants and things like that and okay so I mean, you kind of have to look at so basically they compared us to our white counterparts and basically said we get less sleep we also get less deep slow wave sleep which is uh one of the sleeps that we need to get into that's res- restorative okay, um, okay okay um and unfortunately it has predisposed our community to insulin resistance as well wow <laughs> um, Wow. decrease energy, um, increase appetite, um, which then impacts chronic health conditions like high blood pressure, mm-hmm. obesity, diabetes, and depression. So everything is all connected here. Okay. So yes, it's, it's everything important. is connected. Yeah. Wow. 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 So what are some things um, that when we said we talk about this whole power of rest, can you talk to us about some things that we can do to enhance our rest mentally, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually? So when it comes to sleep, one of the things that I talk to, and I'll, I'll mention that one first, is um, we don't prioritize sleep. Just like we don't prioritize self-care, we don't prioritize sleep either. Okay. Um, we, we try to fit it in there somewhere. So I recommend- And sometimes we wear it as a badge of honor that we don't sleep. <laughs> Right. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't sleep. I, don't sleep. I work and I'm, I'm like, working. I get it done. No, you that's can't not. Do it <laughs> like, no, you can't. I'm sleeping. It's not healthy. <laughs> so set a sleep schedule. So prioritize your sleep. Don't overdo the naps. So have a wake up time. Know what time you're going to wake up. And so if you know what time you really need to be up, then you can backtrack and figure out what time you need to be going to bed because everybody's wake up time may be different um, just based on whether they're more of a night hour or early wake up person. That's where you and I also differ besides <laughs> the doctor ministry. I'm a night owl. Um, and I was just on the phone with someone late last night. They called with some sorority stuff and it was like, they said, I'm so sorry for calling you late. And it was like a 930, 945. I was like, I'm a night owl. It's fine. 945. Yeah. That's, me. that's not late for you. Now me, yes. you call me at 9.45, I'm asleep. Right, right. That's not late for me. I'm usually up to about 11. However, if someone- But like, if you, you call, call me at 5 in the morning, morning I'm awake. Right, <laughs> but I don't wake up until 8. Right. So right. I, I work from home. I have to walk across the hallway. So it's fine. I still get my- uh, my hours in. So I know if I know what time I need to be up by, I have backtracked. Okay. You need to be in bed by this time. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and make those adjustments gradually. Make sure you have some kind of routine with your nighttime and shutting it down, unplugging from social media. That's yeah. both a physical thing as well as restorative with sensory rest. Because okay. we need to take some breaks from social media, from TV, from all of these devices. Oh, because all that. These devices not only keep us so locked in with everything, sometimes a lot of negative stuff that's happening, but we also have to realize that these devices keep our brains wired in this electric mm-hmm. electrical activity moving and stuff like that because of the blue light from our devices. 
it suppresses melatonin and melatonin is necessary to help us sleep and rest at nighttime. Wow. Um, I talk to people about changing the, the tenor of like what's going on within the room, optimize your room, blocking out lights, um, you know, making sure that you have cooler temperatures, that you're comfortable in your bed and that you're actually going to be able to not be tossing and turning at night. And then don't take stuff to bed with you. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. if you are taking all your devices and stuff to bed with you, you're on your right. phone up in the middle of the night and that kind of stuff, you're not going to go to sleep. So you you you're turning your your bedroom and your bed and your sanctuary with from for rest into your office and into, you know, wow. all these other things that's not conducive to physical right. physical rest. Okay. And so, you know, we constantly are plugged into everything that's going on. So it's not just impacting our physical rest, but our mental rest. We don't give ourselves those necessary breaks to disconnect from things. So, you know, we don't disconnect from, like I said, the social media or, or from the television or from other people. Right, right, right. <laughs> sometimes we need that kind of emotional rest and space from other people as well. And okay. so, you know, I was having not only just with you all in the retreat, I had a conversation with someone like, um, there are certain phone calls. Like right. if I get a phone call. Um, I may have the time to take that phone call. I may not take that phone call because I don't have the space. Right. The emotional I, space. I don't have the emotional space. Right. So I may have time. I don't have space. And uh -huh. I check with myself. Okay. I got time. I got time. I'm sitting here. Do I have space for this right now? No, I, I don't want to put X, Y, Z aside. Yeah. I want to, I'm sitting with my husband watching a movie. I don't have space for this right now. You'll still be there. I, I'll, I'll yeah, call yeah. you in an hour yeah, um, yeah. or I'm spending time doing this or I could be spending time doing absolutely nothing. nothing. Reading a book. Because doing nothing is doing something. It is doing, it is rest. It is. Reading it's a book rest. is just, is for me yeah. resting. Yeah. I love being it's able to just immerse myself into a book mm -hmm. and I don't want to interrupt where I am in the middle of this book. So I'm going to answer your call in another, I'll get back to you in an hour. Let me re read a few more chapters okay. and then I'll get back to you. So it's okay to, to, to take that space that you need to get the rest that you deserve. That is not a reward for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to, to, to do that. that emotional rest. I love that, that. emotional rest that you mm -hmm. need. And mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people don't do that. They're like, so-and-so's calling. I need to go ahead and answer. You can, I mean, you're still going to respond to them. It's not that I never return the call. I just, not in this moment. Mm -hmm. This moment is for me right now. Mm -hmm. I'm resting right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a situation a couple of days ago where I just had to put, remove myself from, uh, a conversation, a dialogue about something. I was like, I don't have the emotional space, the mental space, or the spiritual space for right. this right now. I'm and I'm doing 21 days of fasting and praying, and <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all handle that, and y'all right. be all right. But I'm going over here, to take care of my soul, my spirit, or whatever, because I don't, I can't enter into that. And right. I, I, I heard something, um, um. Uh, um, on my Peloton app, I was doing a um, a stretch video the other day, and the the um, the trainer she was saying as we were going through our stretches, she was saying make we're making ourselves unavailable to the things that stress us out, to the things that mm -hmm. cause stress and anxiety, and I was like yes. That's yes. what this is. So when I'm working out, I don't, I'm not answering my phone. I'm not talking to anybody. I have made myself unavailable to other folks' drama. And Absolutely. it's not just when I'm working out, but sometimes I have to determine within my day, within my week, or whatever right. span of time this is. And I'm before you put stuff on your calendar, you know, so we we check with our we check with our spouse, we look at our calendar and say, okay, I can do that. I'm um, available. I, I'm available. What I what I recommend is check in with your body and your spirit and say, am I going to be available for that? Do I have the space for that or do I need to, to do something else? Have I already do I have some other things, um, even though I have the time on my calendar, do I have some other things going on that week that's going to be um, a lot for me? And so because I already have some other demands on myself, do I need to add this to my calendar or do I need to block out some time for rest for myself 
in my calendar. So don't just check with just check with your calendar and the physical blocks on the space. Check with your and check with your spouse. Check with yourself and like, okay, let me see what I got going on this week. Do I am I available? Am I can I make myself available for this? Mm. Do I have that capacity? Right. Um, and that helps with that mental rest piece because you're 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 giving yourself that permission. Permission right, to say, yeah, okay. I, I need I need some some time here just for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, and then of course, you know, spiritual rest as well. We talked about um and you know, certainly, you know, there, there's so much there scripturally about rest that we kind of talked about. Um, she, even Buddhist monks know that rest is necessary and in silence. Like <laughs> we need to model ourselves a little bit more uh, as far as what they do and what they are showing us. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, just kind of enjoying silence. I don't have to fill up every space and every moment with something. Yeah. And no way. Right? When noise, yeah. um, I, I I question individuals who feel like they do have to fill up every moment of everything because then it's like, well, what are you avoiding with yourself mm -hmm. if you need to fill up everything? Yeah. And maybe you need to to check in with a therapist and, and kind of unpack maybe some of those things that's got you avoiding spending time with you. Because mm -hmm. I love me and I love spending time with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm at, at, at full capacity, um, that I have the rest that I need so that I can be there for others. But I, I don't want to make sure I'm at full capacity so I can be there for me. Um, and so I, you know, talk to you all about that as far as setting boundaries and doing things. And I got to set boundaries with me. Like I start with me first, like, mm -hmm. you know, when I, when I'm going to answer the phone, how I get out of bed in the morning, do mm -hmm. I, do I pick up the phone first thing and I'm on Facebook or Instagram right, 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 right. first thing, you know, um, do I ask for help? Right. You know, when I need it or, or give myself a break or, you know, I had my to-do list, but I didn't get everything done on my to-do list. Okay. Get yourself. Okay. Get myself, right. Okay. Get yourself right. I, I still need a rest. I still yeah. need a break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. that It'll be. Let yourself off the hook. Yeah. Let yourself off the hook and give yourself permission. That's that self grace we talked about last year. Remember? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we just, we just don't do it habitually. We don't make it a habit to be yeah. as kind to ourselves as we are to other people. Oh, wow. Be yes, as kind yeah. to ourselves as we are to other people. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all see why I have her at the self-care retreat and why I bring on this podcast. This is so, so good. So re we need mental rest. We need emotional rest. We need physical rest. We need spiritual rest. What kind of aids can we, what kind of things can we do to aid us in this rest? Um, so the first thing that I would say is to look at what you have. So I would start with kind of looking at your calendar and what you have. And then because you don't necessarily need anything. And that's the great thing about rest is it's it's not that you are required to buy something or I got to spend money. Um, this is really about time. Right. And figuring out how I'm going to utilize my time more wisely so that I can build that into my schedule. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't it doesn't cost you anything <laughs> to build this into your schedule. But right? when people but talk to us about people who are really having emotional and maybe even mental health issues yeah. that cause them to not be able to do these. What Absolutely. kind of support systems can we could they put in place? So, you know, some of the things that I certainly recommend is that um if you I'm not just an advocate of mental health services because I am a mental health pr practitioner um, and a psychiatrist. I'm an advocate because I know how much it impacts everyone and um, we see it so much. And I'm a practitioner of it because I, I utilize it myself. So um, find yourself a therapist. Um, it is okay to have a therapist. It is okay to have a therapist. And I'm gonna say it again. It is okay to have a therapist because I think some people are like, I don't really have anything to talk to 
that I'm about, I'm be like, yes, you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, you do. Because if I find I, if I can find something to talk to my therapist about, I'm sure you have something to unpack too. We all like, do. Like, we all you're have sitting, to you're sitting here in my office, virtual office. You, I've got you on these medications, but you're telling me you have nothing to unpack with that person. You mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. um, and it just may be that you are scratching the surface or you don't want to unpack some of the things that you're dealing with. Um, but we could all use some help with how we interact with others, how mm -hmm. we interact with ourselves and um, learning a bit more about how we operate and um can do it yeah. in a way that is healthier for us. So okay. I always look at about health, right? Okay. Um, a lot of us have very unhealthy coping mechanisms and it doesn't have to be addiction. It doesn't have to be alcohol abuse yeah, or yeah. drugs yeah. or um, we, it could be an addiction to sitting on social media for seven hours. Right, it could right. Be, um, a, a addiction of I overeat when I get stressed out. Mm -hmm. Like that's unhealthy coping mechanisms. Unhealthy mm -hmm. coping mechanisms doesn't have to be I'm a cutter. Right. It could be right. that I get in and out of relationships all the time and don't make great choices with who I pick, you know, right. to be or spend right. their time around, whether it's friendships or romantic relationships. So I think that we have to, um, again, listen to our body, listen to our minds and not be ashamed or feel guilt or embarrassment about seeking out a mental health professional. Um, the state of Georgia, I know this is across, you know, country or, um, but the state of Georgia has um, resources, has 24 seven crisis lines. Um, most uh, every state I know has the National Alliance of Mental Illness (NAMI), where they can. You I'm know, gonna put a, a banner up. Keep see, the okay. National Alliance of Mental you know, Illness. Uh -huh. yes. So the, the the acronym is NAMI, NAMI. Mm -hmm. and um, they are a place where people can you know start with finding resources. So mm -hmm. even if you don't know who in your state to go to, um, or where to go, or where to start. You can start mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. um, they have a web page where you can find your local NAMI chapter in your county mm -hmm. um, and just read up different information about different psychiatric illnesses um, and have a better understanding. Um, use your primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're we're all interconnected here. Use your primary care physician. They they may not have a direct name or person that they can send you to, but they may say, okay, I think you would need to in your state call mm -hmm. this individual or um, reach out to this particular organization. Uh -huh. and I they okay. refer you to someone. Um, there are there is um, therapy for Black girls. Um, which is a, um, which is, <laughs> this is what it sounds for. It is a uh, web page where they have information about uh, Black female therapists across the country. Mm -hmm. um, and you just go onto their site and um, can access information um, for them. And, um, you know, reach out to your health insurance provider and mm -hmm. find um, a therapist through that way. Um, and then um, another particular portal that I will use quite frequently and tell my, my patients about is um, psychology today. It's kind of a, um, it's almost like an advertising type uh, web page where um, therapists across the country, you put in your zip code, you mm -hmm. can put in your health insurance information, um, and then it will pull up people in your zip code who uh, take your health insurance and you can see, and they have a write up about themselves, about who they are, some descriptions, what kind of um, diagnoses they may treat or issues they may treat, which mm -hmm. age groups um, that they service, um, what their hours are, what their rates are. So you have all of that information there at your fingertips, and then you can message them directly from the site, or you can go to their website and contact them from there. Um, it's how I find my, I, Psychology Today was how I found the therapist I've been working with for the last mm -hmm. uh, two years. Yeah. Now. Um, mm -hmm. And she has definitely been a godsend for me um, in that I get to be Anastasia with her. Yeah. Dr. Alvarado is left at the door. I understand. Um, 
Absolutely. I get that. Um, and you know, I'm a big proponent of therapy. I've had several therapists in my lifetime and I'm currently with a grief therapist right now. And um, I've been with her almost a year um, because it's coming up on almost a year that I, that mom has passed. And so I'm big on grief therapy, just therapy in general. We've had family therapy, uh, because you know we have our son who has mental health illness. Um, and um, so it's we've not only had to have therapy for him, but our whole family has been in therapy. Um, then Bishop and I have had marital therapy, and, mm-hmm. you know, all of that, you know. Right. And when we were in family therapy, the therapist saw all of us together and all of us <laughs> individually. And it was necessary because we found that Ariel had things she needed to unpack. Jonathan had things he needed to unpack. Of course, Joshua, who uh, was the main center focus of that family therapy sessions. But it was good for us. And and Bishop and I individually and then us together as a couple, um, I believe in therapy. I believe. And it doesn't have to be anything wrong, but just ask somebody to unpack things with. Right. Um, it's it's and, just maintenance for me at this yeah, juncture. Like Absolutely. Because my insurance company does time. not pay for it in yeah. any way, shape, or form anymore. Yeah. Uh, at first it did. And then after a while, she was like, they're not going to continue because there's nothing, quote unquote, wrong, because that's what a lot of insurance companies are looking for. But I decided to continue with her because I appreciate the changes I've seen within myself yeah. in, um, in, in, in being able to again, unpack some of the stuff and just dealing with the weight of this pandemic and build and dealing with the fact that I, I have other people who unload everything just like a pastor would on you. Right. Need some time to be able to be like, okay, I I don't have to take this. Right. I'm the person for everyone. Like, Not just and I gotta unload them somewhere, right? right. And there are and a lot every of therapist people needs like a therapist. That. Yes, every and pastor you. needs a therapist. Every pastor Absolutely. needs a pastor. It's it's we we need one another. No man is an idol. We need one another, and I appreciate good girlfriends. I think rest is also uh, something you can have um, in fellowship because yeah. even in Aruba, even though there were times where I had rest in isolation, there was rest in that fellowship as yeah. well. And just yeah. being able to sit out at the beach and just be and engage with each other. But your girlfriends are not your therapist. Right. Okay? And I, I just, I can't, we, that's how we try to use each other. Like I'm not your therapist. I'm your <laughs> friend. Um, to be honest, a, a lot of times we're not as honest and authentic with, with our, our with our friends yeah. as yeah. we could be with that therapist or with that psychiatrist. Um, we're not going. We're not going to delve too deep. Or we're going to share a little bit, but just enough for them to help me, but not really to really address to the root of your issues, underlying and what those root issues are. Yeah. So, and the other thing is, is is that really fair to the girlfriend that she's got to carry the weight of that with her? Like she's got her own stuff too. <laughs> so that's not fair to her. How good of a girlfriend are we? <laughs> So we yeah. got to unload everything on our everything girlfriend. Everything on their Honey, save you some money for a therapist. Just like you <laughs> buying shoes and hair and nails, pay for therapy. Absolutely. That's and right. you will be able to find someone. And if you don't have health insurance, um, there are uh, places where you can go. I work at a community mental health center. So a huge bulk of my patients have no health insurance at all at Viewpoint Health. And Viewpoint, um, she works at, for those that are listening and not watching, she works at Viewpoint Mental Health. And that's a community mental health facility. Where yeah, you can so get we provide this. health care, uh, mental health care. And so community we have therapists health. and psychiatrists and and uh, group programming for addiction, and uh, they have um, residence programs, crisis units. I mean, we're kind of across the board in Gwinnett, Rockdale, and Newton counties. And um, But there are other um, private uh, practitioners who may um, see someone on a sliding scale um, Mm -hmm. at a reduced rate, 
Yeah. Um, and so I believe, I think the name of the uh, website is called Open Path Collective. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, I don't know if it's Dr. English yet, but uh, mm -hmm. Felicia English who mentioned that. And yeah. I've actually utilized that resource as well. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah. Um, find a uh, therapist on a sliding scale where yeah. instead of paying 80 to a hundred dollars a session, you may pay 40 or 45 for a right. session. Right. As a matter of fact, my grief therapist said to me in my last session, she was like, listen, I've hired, um, um, a, um, um, what do you call it when they're in there? Uh, intern or like intern. Intern. that's mm -hmm. it. She said she hired an intern. And so her, her intern, she's able, she said, if you know anyone that can't afford to pay what you pay me, send them to me. My intern is, you know, working with right. me and we do that on a sliding scale. So exactly. that's what I can do. And, um, so there I've recommended her to several people and several people have gone and they're being helped in the Absolutely. area. That they so there's, there's, in. there's not a reason why you shouldn't. So I don't want people to be turned away. Like, well, I don't have health insurance. There is something in your state, in your county, um, if it's not, you know, in here in the state of Georgia, there are community mental health centers in every all single the county, every oh. single one. And all of them, um, because we have grants and, and state funds, all of them see individuals who have no health insurance wow. um, okay. because that's that's what we do. Okay. So um, I think everyone should have access to quality, quality mental health care. OK, everyone. Yeah. Well, Dr. Anastasia, our time is well spent. Thank you again. Um, of course, you know, I love uh, <laughs> have, talking to you and you've been a resource to our family, of course, as as a sister in love and auntie and all of that. Um, and then just to our church community as a member of our church, to our sorority as a soror, a, a soror we are so grateful. I'm just glad I'm so glad my brother in love married you, girl. I like him better. And the minute, as Jonathan said, she's doing good. She's doing good. She's doing good so as long as I have his stamp of approval. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you that are watching us or listening to us on, on the podcast. If you're not watching us on YouTube, go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Tony, at Tony, Dr. Tony G Alvarado. Please go there and uh, check out this podcast uh, on a regular basis. We upload new episodes every week. So you can go there, subscribe to the podcast. It does not cost you anything to subscribe to this podcast and it is open and available. It is a resource as you've heard all of my, I bring quality women on this podcast and men, a few good men, but I bring them on people who are, who are certified, trained, degreed in their areas, who have experience in their areas of ministry, mental health, nutrition, fitness, health, wellness, you name it, finances, career um, development, professional development. I bring those who are trained and tried and proved in these areas. And this is a, a free resource. All you do is go Absolutely. on, click, share, it, watch it like you binge on. on and on a Netflix. great time of rest just to sit there and listen to a podcast or yes. go on a walk in nature and listen to a podcast. So this is another uh, particular tool that you can use to, to rest. Yes. Exactly. And yep. so please go to um, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It also will help with our analy analytics when you subscribe and when you even uh, inter interact with the podcast, put comments on there, maybe even ask questions that we can bring back that will help us with future uh, um, um, podcast episodes and let us know other things that you may be interested in us discussing on this podcast. You can find us on uh, Anchor Podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, the Light ATL Live Internet Radio, and of course on my YouTube channel. I want you also, ladies, to know that you can go and you can join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self Care Network. Go there, join the network, and go to my website at drtonyalvarado.com, and you can join the Women's Self Care Network, of which Dr. Anastasia is a part of. Uh, she is a member of the network. Um, when we go on our retreats every year in January, she is one of our staple uh, uh, retreat presenters for the Harmonize Your Life retreat 
a self-care retreat, which we do every year in January. By the way, save the date for 2023, January 5th through the 9th, 2023. We'll let you know very soon where we're going to be in January of 2023. We're still kind of working out uh, where we're going to be and what that's going to look like, what our retreat next year is going to look like. But join the network and you can follow us all year long, engage with us all year around self-care, health and wellness, fitness and fun and all the all things women, all things self-care on the Harmonize Your Life uh, Women's Self-Care Network. We would love for you to be a part of our fitness uh, and our self-care community there. Uh, in the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. Listen, Dr. Anastasia, do you have any last thing that you want to share with us as we close out our conversation on today? I would just say thank you and just say, uh, please join the network. There are ample opportunities for rest with the tea, with the self-care retreat, with yoga, which is physical rest. Um, so you, you will get fed and you can have opportunity to get that rest so that you can be empowered. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, this close out our month of February. Thank you for closing us out with and uh and and recapping what we got at the retreat. Y'all, this is just a little bit. You had you you should have been in Aruba with us. It was just, <laughs> it was it was just dynamic uh, in every way. And so get ready to meet us again next year and join us next week on the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast with your host, yours truly, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. We'll see you next week. Thank you.